I think what we should have done actually. No one did play Orca and we don't. No, just if they double ADC and listen, we've been listen, f They could, we they wouldn't even pick Orca. Listen, listen, what we should have done. I'm not sure what we can think of this. But what we really should have done is just first pick AMC. We should have banned AMC, we should have free Freya Kronos. First pick AMC. I mean, they'll probably ban it then. And then we just flex the AMC. I mean, they would have banned it then. Yeah, but if they ban AMC, then what's the problem? Then we get Merlin. Yeah, I mean, we still do, did, right? Yeah, yeah, but, but like they, they had they Freya, Freya Kronos. They had an impossible backline to dive. And we couldn't even kill their like uh, frontline. I mean, to be fair, our backline first game should be possible today. Huh? Our backline first game should be possible today. I mean, if we got the full build the second game, we win. I mean, I don't know. They just got two momentum. I don't, I don't know if I, vote, I, I don't know if I played it wrong by like trying to peel for your SMT if it's not. Because like the Kali was so close to getting so many kills, and then I would <laughs> alt on her. And you guys would get out with like 1 HP. But then she would get out. I and think what we could have done I was maybe. always so scared to chase her because... Uh, I think she should have gone blink deck in Merc game too maybe. I could, like, my Aegis was good if strong ever went on. Yeah, no, I guess if it was depending on peeling. But I don't think you should ever look to peel on Merc. No, but like the way I wanted to play was to try and like... Yeah, sure. Sta like stabilize you guys and then I can like... Yeah, but the way we always played the scrims is like you back line up. Right? Sure, but like... <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess I should just... I mean, backlines don't play well in scrims. The thing is, the thing is, like, <laughs> I, I just don't see the value of me killing an honor over us killing, like, one of their other players. I mean, players. that's all their objective damage. And if we do... No, it's not, though. If you Like, if we survive without you peeling for us and you kill the honor, like, even if we go trade one for one or something, they cannot do an objective without the uh, honor. I guess. They are yeah. f***ing I mean, I guess like. I should have just tried to just kill the honor, but... And just hope you guys survive. Yeah. I mean, we have a really good combat surviving. Obviously it was so... Like, the thing is, they always got the engagement on us. We never... Yeah, but Volt never died on the first engage. He yeah. always got, like, a fat rewind off. I know. And then if they went on him after the rewind, I would, like, save him after... For the first, like, 20 minutes at least. I guess I should be so... Oh, so f Hard to tell, man. Yeah. This is a best of three matchup, remember, between these two. And the last time they faced off, Knights took this down 3 0 in the Pro League. I don't think Renegade Dealing got to sleep here, though. I think the eyes should be kept on Cheerios Kali here. These two teams have got to be on edge right now, but to see Cheerio with the Kali, it should be fun. Well, there's the Knights on your screen. Let's get it over to the casters to cast the Knights versus Renegades. Well, here come the Renegades. The Pittsburgh Knights are directly across from them. I'm Tom Badinger. Directly across from me is Anatoly Alexeyanok. And of course, behind the scenes, as always, bringing you the action is Doug LeBlanc on the observation. So, totally here. We've got some real interesting stuff to talk about. And honestly, I'm just going to give you the floor. What piques your interest the most? What really stood out during picks and bans for me was the Mercury pick out of adapting into the Geb. Geb was already selected, you know, it has a little bit of the anti-crit. Um, we felt really prepared going into MSI. I thought we had probably like an 80-20, like an 80% chance to beat Renegades. Um, I was pretty sure we were going to versus Dignitas in the next set. Um, we were really confident against them as well. We wanted to get payback for earlier in the split. Um, and then I expected to play, uh, face Rival in the finals, um, and I thought that would be our hardest matchup because I think we're the two teams that play the uh, most common meta the best, um, so I thought that's how the tournament would end up. Um, and I was still confident that we were going to win that as well, so um, because of our preparations, we were all really confident. Um, 
I don't think we doubted any opponents either, um, but we just prepared to our best of ability and Um, going into the tournament, I thought Rival and Splice would be our main competition because I I was almost certain we would make finals. Maybe that's overconfidence, but I always go into like no matter what tournament. It's not that I don't like I would re I had a super high respect for Renegade. I thought Renegades would be harder to play against than Dig. In all fairness, even though that Dig were higher seeded, I thought Renegades would be better um, going into the tournament. But I still thought. We had our number, and uh, if we beat them, we, sh we should be able to beat Dig. And then, you know, just get to the finals, and then I thought we'd either be against Rival or Splice. But Renegade just played things we weren't good enough at playing against, and hadn't practiced enough against. Um, which is unfortunate, but it's, it's just what it is. Renegades, we uh, had what we thought was our dream draft. Um, we had practiced that draft a lot in scrims um, and just stomped people with it. Frankly, it was like, it, it was an insane draft. We were doing really well. It's very single target focused and they had a geb, so we knew that was going to shut it down um, fairly well, but we were still confident we could win the late game if we played it the way we know we should. First game against Renegades is like we had pretty much our, we've been practicing that draft so much with like the Afro Horus com combo especially which been doing so good for us in scrims, but like no one has played Gab against us in so long, and I think Gab counters that combo so much because usually like your Horus two and then I Afro two, like your shred protection so the Afro two does so there's so much free poke but like you can't do that just like Gab with your shield and right. And he'll ruin the CC chain that Horus can do, so you can't really poke as much as you want. So, like, I feel like Gab completely. If it wasn't for Gab, if they had any other support, I feel like we run that game so hard. Because I, I was ahead of. Like, he was playing Honor mid Dardus, which was like really good early game. I'm playing Afro, it's like literally the worst character in the game, early game. And I was still ahead of him, and like everyone were ahead, so. But it was just the Gab that made it so hard. I think we could have still won that game if we committed more to fire a little bit at some points, but still, that Gab made that game super hard. Um, but we tried a strategy not really respecting the Geb. Um, obviously, every time we started a fire giant, a gold fury, we would go in that tank and try to blow them up before the rest of them came in. Um, we kept trying to blow up a King Arthur who was kind of slippery, or a Geb who we couldn't kill because we had a crit Mercury, just the Kronos that was doing a decent amount of damage, and then an Aphrodite which doesn't do a lot of damage to him, so we could never blow up the tanks. Um, and we just kept trying to do that over and over and over again. Okay. Yeah. Cool, go there. Watch out for a big bling gold. He's gonna look for an ult here. I'm looking for Kali, guys. Yeah. Oh, you should try to get I'm going in. Going on gap. Oh, I'm a bit out now. Uh, Alpha behind us. Out to the right. Out, Alpha ult. Third. Careful for blink. Blink. Out dead. Help Afro, help Afro, help Afro. Kali. Kali beats. I'm gonna die here, I think. Oh, Kali, 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 Kali. Kali's Kali, 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 no, I've done. Okay. Anos. Get out if you can. Get out. I don't know, I guess. Run if you can, boys. Get probably a shield. Run. Yeah. I'll just try and go here. Just try and buy time. I was so close to getting out. <laughs> you bank so much time. You want me to try uh, and steal this? Uh, nah. Too, too spread out there, so boys. Like, Arthur has, like, guessing for free, like, from right and guess ult me. I guess I could have beat it earlier, but. <coughs> I think we should push there, wasn't. I don't know. I guess I get fight here, which defend. Yeah. yeah, just defend now. Like we're up here and like all I can't just believe that Kali didn't die, dude. I got like a f three my mark alt and Um well I didn't think we'd lost and even after they got our Phoenix, I still thought the game was winnable. Because we were for the most part we were winning fights until we had one kind of they, I think that there was the one fight where uh, the Arthur got a flank on us and he got the uh, zeros in the with like a blink out, got him in the air, and then they just kind of had a good engagement on us, and, I'm, and they played it positively. They got FG and they seized the Phoenix, but after that, I still think, I thought the game was winnable. Um, but then we were preparing to defend against the Fire Giants. I called, I want to try and hold the waves in left, push them up, force them to try and 
uh, pull the FG and then maybe they'll go for a gamble or maybe they'll try and fight but I, I, I wanted us to try and just buy time I can push the wave up if they force, try to force the FG we can fight or we can even engage before like the fire waves meet our phoenix um, but as I was pushing left and I started back they found an engagement on us in the jungle and they just killed everyone so I mean after that it was obvious there was game over I could not hold we, we traded four for zero and I wasn't in the fight so it kind of kind of sucks that that happened but I, I think the game, game was still winnable until that though. In the jungle, it's it. adapting versus the world. Grass oh! three, and Darnes could go down with one punch. That said, he'll be chased out by Cherry. The rest of the team will go to the throne room, and one game to none, Renegades take the lead of the set. What a game, Renegades. 44 and a half minutes in. Getting the first one in this best of three. Who cares that they lost 0-3 in week number nine to Pittsburgh Knights. MSI, a whole different ballgame. When I walked back into the uh, the studio room where the players play uh, before game two to, to do the draft, um, we were kind of rattled. Uh, we were doubting some of our picks because it's 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 a big shock to the system to lose a game, a close game, albeit, but lose a game where we thought we had a dream draft and that we should definitely win, especially when we prepped really well. Um, so I think we we're all a bit panicky, myself included, and it kind of made us question everything. Um, and from there, we fell back into comfort picks more than an actual comp. We just kind of picked it individually, and there was no real strategy behind it. Uh, we knew what our comp did but we didn't have that goal from the start of the draft. It just kind of fell into our hands that way. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think if it was the best of five, we wouldn't have drafted the way we did in game two. Um, like I see, like, the way things went game one, I think we would have tried to do something similar to that and just ban the gap. But because it was a best of three, we didn't want to really take the risk. At all. I didn't want to take the risk of being like, okay, because I did feel like our comp would have beat theirs as long as they didn't have the gap. Um, and I even felt that with the comp we had, we could have still beaten them if we just played better around objectives. But if it was a best of five, we would have ran the same comp pretty much, would have banned the gap, and then if we lost again, then we would have had to try and make adjustments then. But because it was the best of three, we were like, okay, let's, let's scratch this idea. Um, let's try something else. And it's kind of like high risk, high reward. And it, it, it just didn't work out. Um, so game two started, uh, started off a good start. Uh, we we're up. Not too much. We had first blood, um, so we we're in a comfortable position. I felt like our comp was more of a late game, mid to late game comp, so I was comfortable to just play that early game slow. Um, about eight minutes in, I think, is when the spectator crashed. Um, and it crashed when Horus was ulting up into the air when it looked like we were about to kill him. Um, I could tell by comms that he didn't die. Um, and then, as far as I know, we went to the other side of the map, fought at blue buff, and it didn't go well. Um, and then from there on, they snowballed uh, a kill in duo lane on vote, uh, into a gold fury, into a pyromancer. Not much happened for another like four and a half, five minutes. Um, and then something like another big fight broke out, I think at a red buff, and they got another gold fury and another pyromancer. Um, so by listening to the guys, and I could tell by their tone of voice that things weren't going well. Um, I heard Milzy say a couple times that he was really far behind in experience, so I knew our front line couldn't face them, so we weren't able to contest objectives. Um, and then at some point they got a fire giant and, and from there on the game ended pretty pretty dominantly on their side. Because like Renegades, like we, we scrimmed them a lot before we knew the brackets for MSI. Uh, and like they would do really well with Merlin ADC so we felt like we can't give them Merlin at like because like Fumble will play ADC and he does so much work with it late game. 
It's so like we, but we we practice a lot of Merlin too. We played in mid, but I think Merlin ADC is just so like I think mages in ADC is just better in general because like you want your mages to hit late game faster, and in this meta you get so much farm in ADC. And like the second game I played Merlin mid, I was doing fine, but like st still I'm under level, you know, compared to the solo lane run ADC. So, I mean, we could have won that game too. We just had to get to the late game, but we couldn't. We had, we had like two bad things happening. One, one time a vote went for a solo kill on vote, and I think he missed an ability and he died for it. And they got this tower, so they got a lot of pressure from that. And then, I'm not sure if it was after or before, but they invaded. They had like a bad fight at the enemy blue buff. And they, ha they had King Arthur too, and he got ahead from that. So like, they were, just, they were ahead on Freya ADC, and they were ahead on King Arthur in solo lane. And I was playing Merlin, like I needed items and I could have carried, but like I never got there before they. But I think if those two mistakes didn't happen and we just dragged that game to late game, I'm pretty sure our late game was way better. Than just the fact that we gave them a comp that we shouldn't have given any team at any time. Yeah. I think it was really... It was a bad response of us. We tried to be like... We tried to adjust from what they did in game one and tried to like just play against something we've never practiced against, which was Freya and Kronos in the same team. We'd never played against that in like scrims and we'd never allow it in scrims, but we were like, okay, maybe maybe we can play against this. Maybe this is like as good as it sounds, but it's just too hard. The, the, the Freya has too much pressure early game, and the Kronos is just too hard to kill at any stage of the game, post level 5. And he still has a decent amount of pressure, so we, we just couldn't do anything. Unless we snowballed of course, but we didn't manage to snowball. So Wednesday, beaten by Renegades in a 2-0. Uh, game one, really close. Game two, wasn't close, even though they, the community couldn't see it. Um, all three games, Renegades versus Dignitas, didn't seem very close. Renegades were in the driver's seat the whole way through um, with a whole different meta than anybody else was playing. Um, I still had Splice picked in the finals. I thought they were gonna take it 3-1. Um, but again, they took a 3-0 um, and just proved that their meta, the one that they were playing, the only team in the tournament, was, was the best there. Um, they all stepped up to the plate as well. And yeah, 3-0 in Splice and again, our game being the closest one against them was kind of softens the blow, but at the same time, it hurts because I know if we played the game one the way we should have with our draft, we probably would have ran it back in game two and forced them to change their gameplay. Um, but instead, we lost that game and changed everything ourselves for game two. And that's what I felt Renegades won the tournament off of. Obviously, they played well the following days as well, but I felt like we definitely were the team that played the general meta the best, if you didn't include Renegades meta. So when it came down to it, us losing Renegades meant that there was no other team that could beat them. And they had a free tournament from there. Not a free tournament, but a, a breezy tournament from there. I think the hardest set they had was, was us in Wednesday. Phase two, I think there's great things uh, in the horizon for Pittsburgh Knights, especially seeing how they interact with each other, the way they talk about the game. Uh, being able to talk about it after a loss is more important than I think of how you just dominate in a regular phase, right? Like anyone can be undefeated, go eight and one or seven and two, but it's how you handle adversity, right? So this is the ultimate test, I think, for this collective unit. It's like, sure, they finished third, they lost an MSI to the team that won MSI. How can they translate that into phase two? I think they'll have another dominating performance in the regular season, but they need to be able to create their own meta that'll surprise everyone, that they can really show off. Um, so I think Renegades really inspired us with their win. Um, so moving forward, we want to change the way we approach practice. Not only do we want more practice, but we want to open our minds a bit and experiment more. Um, we kind of settled on the fact that we thought our meta was the best and didn't really respect some other options that came in, even though they were never like fully thought out. 
and Renegades really proved their point that there was a whole nother meta out there that could be just built from the ground up just based on experimenting in scrims. So we want to try some of that, um, specifically maybe like mages in the ADC role, um, could even like switch roles up where putting players that are better at those gods in those roles and putting maybe like, let's for example, say we put zeros in, in the hunter role on a mage because he's good at mages. We put vote in the ADC it, as an ADC in mid because he's good at hunters. Um, so that's like something we could try. Um, but the main thing is just more practice because we want to experiment a lot more the same way that I think United and Renegades are both done. It is tough, definitely a tough loss. Because like obviously we have, like we always have like really high expectation for ourselves to win. Like every time we lost, like we get upset. But I mean, we we, talk, we always like talk about it after and we get over it. So, I mean, we came home, like obviously it still felt, felt shit, but we came home, we had like a team talk on like what we should have done. And it was pretty obvious. And then like, just try to not repeat that mistake again.